Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and today we're breaking down mid arm web. The brand new Spider-Man Universe movie is now out, and I'm so hyped because you guys know I love Marvel and also the webhead. Oh, it's a so Sony movie. Madam Web is one of the worst superhero films, if not the worst superhero film I've ever seen in my life. Oh, for fuck's sake. But is it as bad as you think that it would be? Well, throughout this video, we're going to be going through the movie and talking about all the characters and also its ending. There will be heavy spoilers, so if you haven't had a chance to see it, then I want to see you out like Sydney Sweeney's... Can't say that because this is a kid's show, but with that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into Madame Web. A week ago, I spent my life racing against time. I'm gonna help you out today, okay? Trying to save people who were running out of it. Get ready! Until one moment... ...changed everything. Welcome back to Volhand that we're living. And the movie centers around Cassie Webb, who works as a paramedic in New York City. After a near-death experience causes her to develop psychic powers, she starts to see the future events in the spider world. This includes other women from the Spider-Verse, who in the future will become legends of their own. God damn! And the marketing for this movie has been absolutely wild. So, while my character in the movie may be able to see the future, I also can. And I know what the future brings. I know that when you see Madame Web, you're going to love it. In fact, I think you're going to see it twice. Is this promo trying to fuck me? About, about to leave my wife for this damn promo. In fact, I think you're going to see it twice. So anyway, I went to see it twice and they also revealed the costume on a bottle of ocean spray. I was about to leave my June popcorn bucket for this because goddamn, but in case you don't know, Madame Web's a bit different from how she is in the comics. For this first part of the video, I'm going to put the crap jokes to the side and just talk about all the origins and the source material. Dakota Johnson's a much younger version than how she's typically portrayed, and this film explores her origins in the noughties. First appearing in 1980's Amazing Spider-Man 210, she was created by Denny O'Neill and John Romita Jr. Introduced as a powerful psychic possessing clairvoyance, Cassandra was originally born blind due to a neurological condition. Obviously, they've changed this up for the film, whereas in the comics, she developed her psychic abilities because of her blindness. Becoming a medium, Webb in the comics instantly realised that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, and through a phone call, helped him to stop a politician from being murdered. Since then, she's played a much larger role, and has been someone who's been able to tap directly into the multiverse. Now, looking at the comics, it's clear Marvel are leaning into their Spider-Verse run, which first debuted in 2015. This was around the time of Secret Wars, and it's a big story Sony's taken a lot of inspiration from. They've of course crafted their own Spider-Verse films, but beyond that the book features the Great Web. This is a multiversal web made up of all realities which all centre around their own version of Spider-Man. In the book we watched a group of vampires known as the Inheritors who feasted off these spider totems and hunted them down. Yikes! At the centre of this all was a character known as the Master Weaver who lived in the middle of that Great Web. No spoilers for who this actually was, but they were put in charge of the Web of Life and Destiny. The closest thing we have in the MCU right now is of course Loki, who's probably about to wipe his ass with this universe. Don't do it though Loki, we need, we need Mobius for the memes, yeah they're good memes, worked hard on them. Now in the comics we also followed Selk, who was protected by Ezekiel's sims. She and Peter were bit by the same spider and Ezekiel knew of the inheritors hunting her down. Thus he'd hidden her away and this is why she could pop up 50 years later like, hey I've been here the whole time mate. Now, Ezekiel in this film has been changed to its major villain, but he does have ties with Cassie's past. I've seen that man before. So who is he? Ezekiel Sims. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Okay, okay, so just gonna ignore that because they cut that line from the film. However, they do have it broken up into chunks, so the meme still counts. It still counts. In the movie, he's two gained spider abilities along with clairvoyance. He's pretty much Sims in name and look only, with a character being barefoot so that he can climb walls. See, I told you I'd be explaining why stuff happens. This has also allowed him to see into his own future and witness his own death at the hands of the Spider Women. Thus, he's been obsessively hunting them down, and that takes us into our group of Spider Women. There's Spider Woman, Spider Woman, and Arana, who's also sometimes known as Spider Woman. And the first of these, played by Sydney Sweeney's, called Julia, based on Julia Carpenter from the comics. First introduced during Secret Wars 6, she's become one of the mainstay Spider Women in the Marvel Universe. Julia also recently appeared in Across the Spider-Verse, with her now making her big live-action debut with Sweeney in the role. 
Both she and Webb have a lot of connections in the comics as when Madame Webb died she passed her psychic abilities to her. This gave her telepathy and astral projection with her also having teleported on some very rare occasions. She ended up marrying her college sweetheart and together the pair had a daughter named Rachel. However, it was discovered that he'd been cheating on her and after the pair divorced, Julia got custody of Rachel. From here on out, she became embroiled in a government group called the Commission that had decided to create their own superhero. Julia was unwittingly led into the experiments by her college friend Val Cooper in which she'd believe that it was an athletic study. Injected with a mix of spider venom, she got similar powers to Peter and shortly after took on the identity of Spider-Woman. Appearing in Secret Wars, she then returned to Earth and has become a character who appears from time to time in the Marvel Universe. Alongside her is Anya Corazon, who in the films played by Isabella Merced. Corazon is none other than the hero Spider-Girl, who was originally born in Brooklyn. Also, sorry, I'm, I'm putting on an accent to say those. I don't, I'm trying, I don't know why I'm doing it. I apologise, it, it, I'll, I'll move on. Now, the pair moved to Mexico when they were very young, but they then returned to the States after her mother was killed. Bit, bit more serious that now. Now, Anya is someone who has all the powers that your typical spider peeps do, and similar to Miles, she's also able to camouflage. She's capable of hiding in shadows and going invisible, which is a bit like a crab spider that can also change colours. Do you understand? Seriously, you need to be a neuroscientist to understand. And that's two and a half hours of my life that I want back. I want it back. Now back to Webb, in the comics she was able to perform psychic surgery on people and enter their minds to fix issues with their brains. She's also someone who's currently immortal and this was due to the gathering of the five. That was something that we talked about recently with it basically being a group of five people brought together by Norman Osborn. The five had relics that were a giant gamble with each one of them either being a blessing or a curse. In the end they'd either get power, knowledge, immortality, insanity or death but none of them were exactly as they seemed. Norman believed one of the people got insanity when in reality they were simply gaining all the knowledge in the universe. As for Osborne, he was the one who got insanity, with him being under the impression that he'd actually got power. The one who did get power was Maddie Franklin, who became a version of Spider-Woman. He's played by Celeste O'Connor, and all these threats take down Sims in the future. Now that gives us our Terminator motif in which he's constantly trying to kill them before they're able to gain their powers. However, in doing this, he inadvertently causes them to come together and kill them faster than they ever would normally. The Terminator metaphors are laced throughout, with Terminator of course causing its own downfall. Went back in time to kill John Connor, but in doing so it inadvertently created him. However, in Sarah stopping it, it also created Skynet too, and thus we had a perfect loop of the motives of the Terminator being created by travelling back. So it's a timey wimey wibbly wobbly stuff, but hey, it, it's a pretty cool premise for a superhero movie. So that was a fucking lie. Now the movie begins in 1973, where we see Constance Webb researching spiders in the jungle. We learn throughout the film that her unborn child had a rare condition that meant it was going to grow up having lots of issues. Constance wanted to get a legendary spider so it would help cure this condition and thus she teamed up with Ezekiel's sims. Ezekiel wanted the power for himself though and he shot her upon finding the spider. Constance was then saved by the legendary Lasaranya, who were the mythical spider people of Peru. They took her and a spider bit her as she gave birth which then provided a cure as Constance passed away. A man from Narcos is one of the last Aranyas, and he said he'd fill her in when she was old and returned, which, which pays off later in the film. Cassie then gets her powers, which are activated by the accident, and after her mate Mike Epps dies, she starts to see it as a curse. No one believes her, and she's got a real Cassandra complex, however, after saving a bird, she realises she's able to alter things. Guess she wasn't asked about saving Peter's mum and dad and uncle in the future, but you could say that was always meant to happen because it would create Spider-Man. The two characters that have been kept from the marketing are the people being played by Adam Scott and Emma Roberts. These are actually Mary and Ben Parker, who are of course Peter Parker's mother and uncle. You'd think they'd be front and centre of the plot, but they're kind of cast to the side. There were rumours that all Spider-Man references had been removed from the picture, and yeah, you, you can definitely feel that. Can you name the three Spider-Man uh, Tom Holland movies? Yeah. <laughs> Should I just go on faith? Yeah. Oh. Spider-Man... Here's here he comes. Here he comes. That's, That's yeah. number one. Yep. Spider Man, and he's back. And the other one, the last one is yeah. um, at uh, the Goblet of Spider Man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Need a vacation. Harry Spider Man and the Goblet of Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about that more in just a bit, but I feel like they should have just called it Madame and made it two hours of slow motion Sydney Sweeney TikTok videos. Anyway, 
Anyway, Ezekiel ends up hooking up with an NSA agent so he can get his hands on what's basically the tech from the Dark Knight. Using this, using this, and I'm not kidding you, he sort of gets a mock-up of the women from his dreams, right? Shut up, shut up for a second. He gets a mock-up of the women from his dreams, has their costumes removed with the software, and then uses his tech to look through every camera in the world to see whereabouts they are. Most of the time, you'd hide from the person you're sleeping with that you keep dreaming of Sydney Sweeney, but Sims uses it to get a hold of the group. It's more BS from the studio that brought us more BS, and after going on the run, Webb leaves them in the woods and goes home to see her mother's research. After waiting for ages, the gang go to a nearby diner with their faces being recognised as missing girls from the front of the Daily Bugle. Ah, that one. Picking up police reports, Ezekiel heads there while a lady stands to Britney Spears toxic. You'd think they'd be laying low, but Julia sees a guy she wants to flirt with. Just, just makes no sense doing this. Should, shouldn't really be in the movie, but to be fair, she is 16 like the movie's Rotten Tomato score. This gives us our scene that opens up the trailer, and I feel, I feel like some of you guys might be watching this video without seeing the movie, so I'm just explaining it from how it happens in the trailer. Webb then shows up and crashes her car into Ezekiel and tells them to get in, with it sort of being a reference to Terminator. Lying low at a motel, she teaches the girls CPR and decides to go to Peru and find out about her past. Here she mind melts and travels into the web world to learn the story of her mother. She had seen her mother as being selfish for going off and studying spiders in the Amazon before she died. I bet she learns that she can be many places at once, and this is what allows her to save the team at the end. This was also where she saw the S that many thought was an under the S from the front of the logo of the amazing Spider-Man run that Ezekiel first appeared in. However, this S is actually the sign of the Pepsi Cola factory. This is where the fight goes down at the end, but it turns out it's an abandoned fireworks warehouse. Makes sense to have a sign for Pepsi on the top of this, and this delicious, delicious drink is laced throughout the film. Don't know if that's a Terminator 2 reference again, because it's everywhere in that too, but on we go. In the background, we also have the plot with Mary Parker, and weirdly, they hide Peter's name throughout the entire movie and keep teasing it like we don't already know. Again, according to reports, the script was vastly different when Dakota signed on, and she said that they put it through some major changes. It's been leaked that a lot of things were supposed to reference Andrew Garfield's webhead, and that they even planned to put him in the film. However, in the end, this just all got removed, with CBR saying they did reshoots to take it out. All connected? It's not, but anyway, she gets driven to the hospital after her water breaks. Sims uses this moment to make his move, while Webb arrives after mastering her powers. With great powers comes great respons responders, first responders, and we get Webb taking down Sims in front of a Calvin Klein advert. By Calvin Klein, and she arrives in the ambulance before they race through the streets. Finally, they get to the Pepsi Cola fireworks warehouse and fight it out in what an amazing battle, amazing third act battle. Webb leads him to the air switch, damages the bridge, causing Sims to fall off and get crushed by the pee. Webb then falls into the water, and at this point, she's blinded by a firework. And I did, I did tell you guys that all this comic stuff, it was worth knowing at the start of the video. Now she's pulled to the shore, and the gang performs CPR like how they learned earlier. However, she's paralysed and now needs a chair. Thus, the hero has been born, and at the hospital, Mary also finally gives birth. What's the baby's name? Never mind. And they also say Ben gets to be an uncle, which is all of the fun and none of the responsibility. Which you dear me? Great line again. Anyway, we'll see about that. And it turns out that Webb can see everything at this point. Rocking giant sunglasses, we watch as the group go to her house, and she correctly predicts everything about the Chinese takeaway, when they're going to sneeze, Lots of stuff that if you actually knew this person in real life, you'd get fed up of very quickly. Do you understand? Seriously, you need to be a neuroscientist to understand. And that's two and a half hours of my life that I want back. I want it back. Also, I love how she has to earn the blindness and paralysis. What a big, big hero earning moment. You know, most movies, I have that bit at the end where the heroes earn their place and she really had to earn that blindness. Also, if you want to support the channel, we've got loads of merch right below the video with Marvel stuff on there and a hell of a lot more. It's all connected, the other t-shirts are on there, and it makes a massive difference to us. Helps bloody great videos like this get made, and huge thank you for all you guys' support. Either way, though the girls didn't get to be the hero of this movie, Madame Webb sees in their future that one day they will be. Staring out of her web window, she sees them tackling crime in New York City, with her guiding them through the psychic plane. She has her costume too, with some Bret Hart sunglasses, and she will be there to guide her family on the way. I was thinking she might get the NSA tech, and then that would allow her to be like in the comics where she's surrounded by computers. Never mind though, time to tease a sequel we'll never get, and that in the end closes out the movie. Ah. <sighs> 
Now, as for my thoughts on the movie, I think in order to describe it, then we have to travel back in time. That takes us to the invention of the camera all the way back in 1816. Next to that, this is one of the most important moments in cinema, with it being one of the greatest movies ever made. I love how Sony, they, they've decided to make Spider-Man spin-offs without Spider-Man, and it's a genius way to take their Spider-Man universe. I also think it's great to have an EMT who doesn't have much interest in saving people's lives. It's great how she's constantly trying to fob off her responsibilities because, as we know, with great power comes no responsibility. I feel like film school is going to be pointless from tomorrow as everyone will learn everything they need to know about making movies by watching Madame Web. It's a tour de force that makes me think they might have used a Ouija board to channel Stanley Kubrick and take his advice. What I also love is that the spider heroes never really get in their costumes and there's not been such an inspired choice since Matt Smith danced to the Have Sex song in Morbius. What I love about the film is also that it has editing like this. Hi sir. Alright, I'm gonna cut your seatbelt. <laughs> Now the edit itself doesn't appear like this in the film, but putting clips out like this shows how little they cared. They only put out one trailer as well, and it sums up that that was all that we needed. Just love the way that they have her go to the car, then cut it so that she's in the car, rescuing herself before she then falls in. Reminds me of the match cut in Lawrence of Arabia, and will obviously be referenced amongst the one from 2001. The movie is truly transformative, and it takes you back to 2003. It was like a time machine where I could smell the MSN messenger and wishing I'd just downloaded this movie on LimeWire. Upon hearing of Madame's mother who died researching spiders in the Amazon, I felt like I was really transported there. Cameron came close to it with taking me to Pandora in the first Avatar, but this time I felt like I was actually there. Didn't need 3D glasses, I was the tree, the leaves, I became a god. Now, the reviews, for whatever reason, have people saying that it's terrible, which I, I really can't support or, or get my head around. I normally don't think that fans should go after critics, because everyone's got their own opinions. However, I think that anyone who says this movie's bad should be rounded up and shot. Another film hasn't got any post credit scenes, and some have said this shows they've got no interest in doing anything more with it. To me, though, you don't need to tease another film, because everyone's just going to keep watching this forever. Morbius came on the scene, and it was like, whoa... Cinema can't be topped, and then this comes along and bloody Citizen Kane's it. This is the greatest film Sony's ever put out, and move over Deadpool, your Marvel Jesus is here. Drink blood, watch movie, eat food good, make money, click, view, subscribe, you fuck. IGN have also given it a 5, which, like I said, yep, 5 out of 5. I'm going to give it a 200 out of 10, and I doubt that I'll ever watch anything again. I'm as enthusiastic about this as Dakota Johnson was on the press tour and I feel like it's fitting it's a Valentine's Day film as I'm in love with this movie. Probably just going to delete the channel after this and huge thank you to Sony for sponsoring this video. Sleep no more, Macbeth doth murder sleep, praise the beast, worship the darkness. Feast my child, the blood king cometh and sacrifice yourself to the great spider web. Sony, you have completely saved cinema, and I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. Anyway, that's our thoughts on the film, and thank you for checking out the video. Please drop a like on the video, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. You get early access to videos every week, but there's, there's not really much point in watching anything ever again, because Madame Web, it's going to make a Madame Billion and save cinema with a trillion. If you want something else to watch, which I don't know why you are, you should be going out of the cinema now, then check out the video that we've got on screen right now. We've been breaking down the Deadpool trailer all week long, and Marvel, it's saved. We're, we're finally saved. We don't need your Deadpool, so don't bother watching those. Don't bother watching Deadpool. Just watch Madame Web until the end of time. Yay!